Our inspection regime is called Ofsted. They go around and they check that teachers, the quality of teaching and learning particularly in schools uh, is up to a certain level. They don't yet have uh, space on their checklist, on their pro forma, which says, and how powerful are your learners? But what we found again and again when we analyzed the reports from our schools was that they were moved to comment spontaneously on the attitudes that they were seeing in the children. Uh, and these are just some examples. They were again and again, they were saying, they were bowled over. It doesn't matter, some of them were schools, again, as I say, in very challenging areas, some of them with quite little children, some schools with special educational needs, pupils with special educational needs have particularly benefited from being trusted to work more independently, and so on. One pupil told us, if it's easy, it will be boring, thus reflecting the ethos of the school as a whole. These are just some typical examples. Denisha is actually a favorite of mine. She's only six. But when she was asked about building learning power and what it meant to her in her school, she started talking about resilience. If something's hard, she said, you don't want to say, oh, this is hard, this is hard, I'll just skip it. In other words, you don't want to, you don't give up. You try, because the best thing is, if you don't try, what's the point? I rather like that. <laughs> it's like, if you don't try, what's the point? Right? If you just go helpless and floppy, it's like, you're not learning anything. And then she says, because when you grow up, you might come to some answer you still don't know, and you can't skip it then. Yeah. <laughs> right? Denisha knows why she goes to school. She's going to school not just to do cute things or colour in or please her teacher. She's going to school to build her learning power. Little Maddie talks about how use, using her learning muscles out of school, uh, how she likes to use them in her uh, swimming, cl swimming class. Now, you might say, when you read that quotation from Madeleine, well, that's not rocket science. It's like anybody might say that. But actually, they wouldn't, because the saying of it is really important. When she says, she stops and she thinks, I could persevere more. I could use my questioning muscles. I could see if I could do some imitating of other people. The la having the language enables her to boost her own learning power in a way that she might not have done otherwise, to do it for herself. She's perfectly capable of persevering and asking questions, but a lot of kids are capable of, but don't, right? So she becomes more self-empowering by having the language for these kinds of approaches. <clears throat> Tom is 15, he's just gone to one of those high achieving schools, Dr. Challoner's Grammar School in Amersham. He says, in my old school, they just gave you harder and harder worksheets. It's like that was the limit of the way in which they thought about progression in my old school. The work got harder, right? Uh, but then he says something very interesting. He says, but here they really stretch you to learn in different ways, right? In other words, what we get in this school is a more varied and valuable diet of mental exercise. They stretch our imagination, they stretch our creativity, they stretch our skepticism, they stretch our resourcefulness, they stretch our resilience, they stretch our ability to collaborate. Right? And that's a really key thing about BLP approach. It's not just getting kids to ask questions, it's stretching kids' ability to ask, difficult, ask harder questions. It's not just doing group work. It's getting kids to do harder and harder kinds of group work so that they get better and better at operating in groups and helping to repair groups as they go along. 